So what's going on everybody? It's Jedi Community 98 here and today we are going to be doing a live tutorial for the Origins Easter Egg, the speed run. Um, I'm currently the world record holder of this category with a time of 102.53 and I wanted to make this guide so that you guys can kind of get into this as well. Now I've got my live chat up here. We're doing this completely live so I'll be talking to them throughout this. Anybody can ask me questions during this run and we will be going through it and I'll kind of just be explaining the process of... Um, streaming and not really streaming but you know however you want to do it streaming recording but uh, submitting your run and doing a run for origins and all that stuff that's going to be this tutorial so um let's go ahead and start this up so the first thing that i recommend doing is if you're playing on console i highly recommend playing on local because local is going to allow you to restart the game easier and you're going to have to restart this game a lot so uh make sure you're prepared for that because there's a lot of rng in the beginning of the run that can kind of screw you over here so uh you want to make sure your difficulty is of course set to original because you can't do the easter egg without that and so we're going to go ahead and hop right on into the game here so um what's going on bolt and sea dog and lightning shadow um, thank you for that, guys. Sea uh, Dog, yes, I did get the record last night. Thank you for the congrats, Ski King. Um, I did beat the world record. Yep. Um, what's going on, OG Gamer, Jazz, Fish Pony? Welcome to the stream, guys. Thanks for the congrats, Fish Pony. I appreciate that. So, you skip the cutscene here. So, we're going to start here on round one, and there's a couple specific things that you have to do very specifically um, here for the first round. So, you want to start off and you want to go in here, and grab the Maxistrome piece right here, and grab this shovel here. And of course, you're going to want to be doing this very quickly and moving very fast here. So, that you want to run up, grab the Maxistrome, grab the shovel, and then you want to come over to this generator panel and you want to go ahead and turn this two times to get that pointed to the left. This is going to save you time on the lightning staff puzzle later on in the run. So now the next thing you're going to want to do is run up here to the generator and go ahead and turn this on right here. Now you don't want to complete this fully. You kind of want to get it maybe three-fourths of the way to kind of keep it as high as possible. But don't complete it. We want to get 100 points from each of the Templars by meleeing them. So we hop off of it when it's almost done and we get some melee kills here on these Templars. And that's going to get us an extra 10 points or so. We're going to hop back on so that way it doesn't drain it too much to kind of um, lower our time here. And then we we just barely get those points that gives you an extra uh more points right there you want to make sure you stay on the generator to get all your points back that you spent on the generator as well as get the other extra 100 points on top of that now we're going to go prone towards quick arrive you don't have to do this this is a totally optional thing for you to do and we're just going to melee all of these zombies and that's how we do our round one you're going to want to wait by this chest here that's going to give you a double points after completing the first generator we're going to stand right here and wait so let's go ahead and read some chat here How's it going, Justin Earp? Thank you for the congrats, man. How's it going, Seth? Red Apex, Ices, Danny, um, Jay-Z, Breeze. Thank you for the congrats, guys, on world record. I do appreciate that, guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. So we're going to wait here by uh, double points until the zombies kind of start spawning in a little bit more. And as we can see, we can see some zombies spawning there. We're going to grab the double points. We're going to go over here. And all you're going to do is put eight bullets into the zombies. And then you are going to go ahead and melee them. Now, to be very careful here, you just don't want to die. You can get some runners on round two, which will very much screw you over. The third zombie almost always drops a power up most of the time there. Sometimes it can be a nuke. Sometimes it's not. Um, but you want to hope that you don't get a nuke. Because early round nukes are going to mess you up for points, which kind of sucks a lot. So we're just going to be putting eight bullets into these zombies and knifing them. Now, the first robot is going to be passing through on around round two. You can never get to the first robot on an early cycle that early. So we're going to come out here into the, the, uh, the trenches here out here and we're going to be trying to get a good weather pattern here now we get snow on round three which means we can start digging up these things right here you can only get the ice staff pieces when it is snowing so you want to dig these things up as fast as you can to try to get ice staff pieces but we need snow on round four and this is where the first bit of rng comes on in the run here so we're going to open up this door as well right here and then we're going to go into tank station and check for the ice disc the stone slab as well as the mp40 so you want to check this spot for the disc you want to check this spot for the disc then you want to come over here and you you want to go ahead and buy the mp40 and then you want to pick up the stone slab right here pick up the ice staff disc and then you want to go ahead and turn this lightning panel three times so that way it's pointed down now what we're going to do on this round is we are going to go ahead and shoot the zombies two times and then two or three times and then we're going to go ahead and knife them now if they do get too clumped up like this just go for headshots as best as you can try to maximize as many points as you can on these rounds don't bother using your mauser because all it is going to do is go ahead and slow you down there so then we're going to come up here and we're going to check for the shield piece right there. You also want to check for the shield piece in the other section where it can spawn as well. Back over there. I'll actually go back and show you guys that real quick. Um, that spot is going to go ahead and be um, right there. So you want to check right here for that shield piece when you come over here. But uh, you want to check those two spots. If it's not in either of those two spots, then you are going to go ahead and have to go over and check in that corner. But we will do that when we get to round four. 
So you want to kind of stay. My goal, my goal is to kind of stay around this area. I like to stay up top here. The zombie spawns are pretty efficient around this area. And as you can see, we are going and getting a robot right there. So we're going to go ahead and finish this round out and hope that we get round four snow. Now, what can happen here is it can continue snowing, it can stop snowing, or it can start raining. If you get snow like this, like it's continuing, that is good. Now you want to be checking this robot because Thor comes here randomly, and you could get early cycle Thor. You want to check his feet. We get that foot right there, which means it's going to be Gen two. That foot would be Gen three. If we got the Gen three foot, we would have to go over there now you want to go ahead and get up top here so that way we can go ahead and get this first wind staff piece right here so we'll go ahead and shoot the foot and go ahead and go in here i recommend shooting with the mauser so that way you can save ammo on your mp40 and we'll go ahead and grab the first wind staff piece and go right out just go ahead and exit immediately as soon as you get in there get out right immediately so then we are going to go ahead and uh, drop down here and now what we need to do for round th four is I recommend you can shoot three times a knife. We're also going to start up the conversion generator. I like to do this in between rounds three and four. So if you guys don't get um, snow on round four, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to pause your game and, of course, restart. And that's why I say you want to be on local so that way you have this restart level button because it'll get you in and out of games as fast as you possibly can. If you're on um, multiplayer, then you're going to, or not multiplayer, but if you're on online, you're going to have to quit game, which is going to require you to watch the death screen, as well as you are going to have to watch the cutscene all over again when you start a new game up. So you're losing a lot of time in between there. So they're going to get an array of power-ups here. I recommend knifing. Knifing also can be very dangerous because you can get a nuke right here, and that would be a very bad thing to pull a nuke. You don't want to pull a nuke. So sometimes I recommend going for headshots if you kind of have enough points. You want to aim for having around five to 6,000 points at the end of this round. We don't really have that many, so hopefully we can do this. Now let's continue digging up some stuff. We got a Mauser there. Here is the final spot for the shield right here. That's where it can spawn. So you want to check there as well. Now we don't have any of the ice staff pieces, which means we are going to have to go ahead and open up Gen 3. So if you didn't get the ice staff piece from Gen 2, we have to go over here and open up Gen 3 and check this spot right here. Now we got an ice staff piece right there. You'll know it because when you dig it up, nothing shows up at first, and then it'll pop out in just a second. You can tell you can tell it that way. So you if you don't get an ice staff piece there and have to open towards the fire tunnel, that's an automatic restart. Now we're gonna go out here and open this up. Now we don't really have that many points, so this is kind of hurting our run right here. So it looks like we're gonna have to do a restart here. You wanna check these spots for dig spots. You wanna check right there, you wanna check right there, you wanna check right there, you wanna check here next to this wooden plank we want to be checking these robots as well to try to get in the foot it's not it's not odin here here's another dig spot right here we'll dig it up we got a zombie so that's kind of good we can get some extra points here which is good that gets us enough to open up church we'll wait for the robot here and like i said you want to be doing this fast check there for the first of the middle shield pieces come over here you want to check right there for a dig spot check here for the uh the disc for the mound open this debris right here and turn this lightning panel three times right there so it's pointed up and then we want to go up here and check right here for another dig spot. And then we will go ahead and check down here. Right there is where one can spawn. We don't have enough to open that up. So if we don't get the dig spot, that is going to be back here. That's the dig spot right there. If we don't get it out of here, which we did get the lightning piece. And if you do have to come around to this part, go ahead and turn this twice. Now, usually when I do a run, what I will do is if this piece doesn't spawn there and I have enough to open that door, I'll go up there and check the spots up there. But since I don't have enough, I had to go around. And then I'll drop down if I still didn't get the ice staff or the yeah the ice staff piece now you want to go out this way and check right here for the maxis drone piece it's a lot of checking as you can see there's a lot of different places you want to look around so just hopefully you can follow through with me we can check right there for the shield piece and a dig spot right there sometimes i like to run over here and check for this dig piece that's going to be right here there's a dig spot that can spawn there usually i don't like to go over there in an actual run until i I've, I've determined that there are no other spots then i come over here and we check this area right there no dig spot right there come around here check for the lightning disc right there it's not there we check for the lightning disc here as well as a dig spot that's going to be right there we grab that hopefully this will be it and there we go we got all three of the lightning uh pieces right or the ice pieces right there and now we can go ahead and kill this zombie but as you can see we have odin coming through so we're actually going to go for odin first because we're going to have to start filling up soul boxes and that's the next thing to do in the run so if we don't get all the soul boxes filled up and for this run that's not too big of a deal but we are going to also check right here for this disc, which is going to be right there. So now we've got Odin, so let's check his foot. It's not that one, so that means it is going to be that one right over there. 
gonna try to shoot it before we actually go ahead and activate it or before he actually stomps on us just to link it a little bit easier on you so we're gonna go up in this robot and we're gonna get the second win piece now these pieces can be gotten at any point throughout your run it doesn't matter as long as you have every staff piece by round eight you are good to go so you just want to kind of optimize find the best time to go for these robots you you might have to restart if you don't get good robot luck it's all complete rng but that's kind of uh, what you got to do there so now we're going to go ahead and head back over to jug right now and then we are going to go ahead and start filling up the soul box now normally you would kind of have a lot more points than this i got really unlucky with the points which really sucks um so you're going to hope that you have enough to turn this generator on right here and grab Jug. That's an ideal run, but sometimes you don't have enough. Now, we are going to go over here, and we are going to turn this this lightning tunnel, this lightning panel here twice so that it's pointed up. You don't have to do that, but um, it is something that you can do in a run. And then this is the last spot for the shield piece, which is right here, so that's an ideal spot for it right there. So now we have two wind staff pieces and the ice staff pieces. It's, you're not always going to have a run where you get that all that stuff early on this this early of a round just because we got lucky with the um or I was I'm just kind of taking it slow so that's why we got lucky with the robots there and we're able to get stuff if you're going fast normally you won't have all those pieces or at least all those win pieces on round uh, four so we're gonna grab this insta kill now that we waited just so that the zombies will spawn in and we're gonna start filling up this box right here as we see Thor is coming through so we're gonna completely ignore him unless of course you didn't get early cycle Thor then you will go ahead and run towards him and try to get it now we need to shoot this plane down here in the sky so just shoot that right there so that way you can get a fire staff piece and we're just gonna keep killing zombies in here do not grab that nuke you don't want to grab nukes you need as many of these souls as possible you need all of these souls to go ahead and go into this box so that way you can get um, good luck here to actually have the uh, get two boxes filled before you go onto the panzer now ideally you want to get two of these soul boxes done before you have to fight the panzer that's kind of an ideal run that's what you need to do for a world record run at least um, but if you're just kind of casually playing and trying to go for a casual time you don't need to fill two boxes up and we died so that's rip all right so now that we are back on round five here um, what you want to do is you want to try to save up enough money to get um, juggernog we're gonna grab juggernog as soon as we can and hope not to die here so we get jug and then we hope not to die once again uh we're just gonna we're gonna go around we're gonna go around yeah so normally you don't want to be this slow like i am here but uh we are gonna go back around now we turn that one we've got the lightning disc we've got gen 4 on we've got the juggernaut we have all the ice staff pieces now so if you're wondering why my staffs or pieces are different it's just because these are gonna be sliced into different runs for restarts and stuff like that so i'm just kind of splicing together trying to get a perfect run just to kind of explain um all the strats that's mainly what i'm going here for is just the strats pretty much um for you guys so if you want to watch a full complete run i will have my world record guide down in the description below for you guys to go check that out you can kind of get an idea of how an actual run goes and how fast you should be moving for for a good good time now of course you're not gonna have to go as fast as world record time unless you actually are gonna go to try to beat my record but uh you know that's totally up to you but if you just want to do this casually just kind of casually speed run it which is a really fun thing to do. Um, then you just kind of want to follow these strats and you want to go ahead and uh, do the best that you can. So as you can see, as soon as we start seeing a robot peek over, that's when we're going to go and run for it when we're waiting to fill this soul box up right here. So we're going to make our way over to Freya over here. The robots are Freya on the church side, Odin comes through the middle, and Thor comes through spawn. So that's what you hear me, hear me calling the robots. Um, so we're going to stand right here is where I like to stand, and we're going to go ahead and check to see which foot it's going to be. So as we can see, it is the Gen 6 side foot right there instead of this one right here. So we're going to run all the way over to Gen 6, and we're going to go ahead and open up this rock right here, clear this debris, and then we're going to come up here. And if you have enough time here, which you want to check for the blinking light, if we have enough time, we're going to place the stone down there, turn this generator once, check for the fire disc right there, and then run on in here to the footprint, so that way we can go ahead and get this right here. Now, we're not going to turn Gen 6 on just yet. We're going to wait a little bit to go ahead and turn Gen 6 on. We're going to grab this staff piece right here. I still need to get the other two staff pieces, but we will make sure we do that. Like I said, a run is basically just kind of hoping that you get good cycles on the robots here, so that way you can get good staff pieces, so... Um, usually what I like to do is I like to come over here and drop down here if you haven't already turned this generator yet You want to go ahead and do that right now Then we will go ahead and hop on top of the tank if there's no zombies around here We're gonna check for the fire disc right there because it's inside of there And we go ahead and grab that for its second spawn now 
In this run, I actually had the Maxis drone piece spawn right here. So, like I said, you want to check for that, and there you go. You can go ahead and get that right there. Um, if it's there, that's an, that's the most ideal spot for the Maxis drone piece. And then we're just going to run back over here to this box, and we're going to continue up on filling this up. So, we should go ahead and be able to finish this as soon as... Um, like in the middle of round 6 is usually when you can finish this box. So you want to try to not get backed up into a corner like I am. Alright, so the box is done now. We're going to go ahead and move on to another box. We want to check for the robot here. Ideally, once you get the first box done, you want Odin to show up. If Odin shows up, that is a perfect pattern right there. Um, and we're going to go ahead and pick this fire staff piece right here. You can pick that up later, but we're going to do that right now. So, um, let's see, and we're going to check for this disc. It's right there. We're going to check for Odin and figure out which foot he's going to be. It's going to be this foot, so we're going to go in that footprint right there. We're going to wait, try to get as many zombies. Uh, we're try going to try to not kill as many zombies as we can here. That's kind of ideal. We want to keep all of our zombies alive as best as we can. Uh, but it looks like most of them are going to go ahead and die here. So, we're going to get into this robot here, and then... We are going to go ahead and grab the staff piece right there. So there you go. It's another one down. And now we are coming out of here. And we have one more wind staff piece that we need to get before round 8. And then we should be set and good to go. Now you don't have to worry about lightning staff pieces. Those will come later. You'll see me grab them in a little bit on round 8. We'll get to that in the future. So uh, we're going to come back over here. Now that Odin walked through, we're actually going to fill this box up here. If it was just Freya that walked through, we would probably fill up the Freya box. So that way we can actually... Um, have a chance of the robot not coming through. You want to go to whatever box the um, robots like just came through because you're going to have the largest chance of them not coming back again. Normally, you don't get the same two robots twice in a row unless you get the three cycle robots. Um, so we'll fill this box up here. That's what we're going to work on doing. Hopefully, we can get it all done. Zombies you dig up from the dig spots right there, they don't contribute souls to the box as you see, so they don't count. Um, you want to also watch your MP40 ammo as well, just because we want to kind of keep that up as much as we can. If you have only like two mags, that's when I would recommend buying MP40 ammo in between rounds. But we're good on ammo now because we have over 100 shots in reserve. So fill this up here, and now we just need to get Thor right now. So it's ideal if you don't have Thor right now, this is not too bad of a run, um, just because we can check for Thor um, from here. It's very easy to see Thor. If you need Freya... This, can, this spot can be a little bit harder to do because it's harder to see Freya from this location. It's very hard to see Freya before it's too late. But Thor is very easy to see from this location. So I kind of recommend trading these guys around. Go for headshots on them as best as you can. Don't get too greedy with your kills here. As you can see, we're getting Freya right there. Yeah, don't get too greedy with your kills here or else you might go ahead and get killed. So that could be a very big problem. So we're going to finish these guys off here. Uh, there's for these boxes, I believe it is around 30 kills for uh, for 30 zombie kills that you need towards a box. So we didn't get enough to fill that up. Hopefully, we will have enough to go ahead and do that. Now comes round eight. Round eight is going to be something that is very difficult to do here because we have the first Panzer of the round, and this is the hardest point of the run, I would say, because the Panzer is very difficult to take out, and you don't have a staff. You won't ever have a staff in a speed run. It's not ideal have a staff we're gonna try to finish this off as best as we can so you get grabbed from the panzer go and shoot his arm and you'll get ungrabbed so i recommend getting as close as you can to the panzer without getting killed because the closer you are to the panzer the less chance that you have of um him actually grabbing you so kind of get as close as you can aim for his head right there as you can see we already have got the panzer down that was a really good panzer not gonna lie uh, that was fantastic. If you get an insta-kill, insta-kills do wonders against the Panzer. They absolutely destroy Panzers. They melt them like crazy. So as you see, we got that box finished right there, which is awesome. So we're going to make our way over to Gen 5 because we need to turn that generator on. We're going to grab some more ammo. We've got an ideal amount of points. This is a very good run right here. So we got a zombie blood, so we're going to grab that and take that over to the generator. If you don't, you want to just try to get down to one or two zombies, and then you can go ahead and come on over here when you have that few. Now we're going to check right there for the wind disc. We're going to check down in that tunnel. As you can see, it actually is in the tunnel right here. Go down there, grab that. That's the worst spawn for that right there, but that sucks. So we're going to come over here, turn this generator three times. The other wind piece can be right there, and we'll go ahead and turn this generator on now and try to dispose of some of these zombies as best as we can so that way we don't get overrun here because that's not what we want to have happen. You can get a little bit hectic around here if you don't have um, 
if you have a full group of zombies or whatever. So we got that going. We're going to go ahead and run over here, grab stamina up, quickly get out before we die here. And we have two more boxes to fill right here. So we seem we're probably at an ideal amount of zombies to where we can actually start moving on in the run. We still need to get Thor. So we're actually going to go ahead and we're just going to wait around in this run before we get Thor. We're going to go ahead and come up here and we're going to go ahead and open this up. Now, ideally, well, actually, I'll explain this in just a second. You want to check here for the uh, other disc and you want to check there for the Maxis drone piece. We're going to come down here, down below excavation. And we're going to go ahead and grab this right here and check there for the Maxis drone piece as well. So I do need to farm some points right now. Just because I need a couple extra points at this point. Uh, but we have a decent amount of zombies. So we're going to be waiting for Thor to show up. Normally you wouldn't want to do this in a, in a run. But uh, because this is a guide, we are going to do this in this one. So we're just going to wait around for Thor. And I'm going to I'm gonna catch up with chat right now while I can, while I'm waiting. Normally in a run, you would uh, you would have to restart at this point if you don't have Thor. Just because that's, that's how it goes. But because this is just a guide, I'm just going to show you guys and wait around until we get Thor. Um... All right, we're good. So there we go. We got Thor out of the way. And we got all the wind staff pieces now. So now we have all the staff pieces that we need for this run. We are good to go. We're very low on points right now, which kind of is going to hinder us a little bit. We need to get uh, enough for 1,500 just to be able to actually continue this run. But we'll be fine with generators and stuff. So um, anyway, moving on now. We're going to check our parts here. I like to check these every so often just to know where I'm kind of at here. We only need one more shield piece and one more Maxis drone piece. So what we are going to go do now, ideally what you want to do is go to Gen 5 and then you want to come up here up to the excavation site, go down there, get the gramophone, and then once you have the gramophone, you'll have everything that you need. The gramophone should be the last thing that you get, and then you're going to come up here, you're going to go down here, and you're going to uh, drop down right here. And head on out because we're going to go ride the tank now. That's the next thing that we have to do in this run. So I'm actually going to check these dig spots. Try to pull some more money here. Just because I might need that for later in this run. I usually like to dig this one up here just in case I get a zombie. But what I like to do is I like to get all the zombies that I have in the run. Or in the round right now. I like to get them all behind me. Which it looks like it's just this single zombie that we have right here. Which kind of sucks. But that's just how it is. Um, so we're going to start off the tank right here. And now when I activate the tank here, um, you want to go ahead. You can also check now for the fire disc if it's right there. You can check for it now if you want to. When I activate the tank here, you want to stay off of the tank. Because if you stay on the tank, the zombie is going to catch up to you and it's going to get on top of the tank. And then it's going to be a real process of just trying to get it off the tank. And it can hit you and it can mess up your jumps here. Because you're going to have to be making some seriously, um, some seriously good jumps here. Um... Some pretty precise movements here, but you'll see me make them, and so that way you guys know exactly how to do them. So we're just going to kind of stay here. You can go for that panel if you don't have it yet, but I don't recommend it because it's going to be cutting it very close here. So uh, now we'll go ahead and jump onto the tank. The zombie should be far enough back to where it won't bother us anymore because this is the first jump that we need to make right here, and you're going to see me make it. I like to stand on the back of the tank right here so that way I don't have to worry about the guardrails of the tank. And then we come over here. And we go ahead and we pick up the first staff piece for lightning. Uh, Bluehead18, thank you for joining the Jedi Knights. I do appreciate that, man. Now, normally what I would do is I would drop down and I would go that way and turn Gen 3 on. But because I don't have a, I have a very, very limited amount of points right now, I actually have to go over here and open this door up right here. But we are going to need that door open up later in the run anyway, so it's all good. Now, I actually need to get uh, 40 more points before I can continue this right now because I need the 500 for the tank, which kind of sucks here. So I'm going to have to go and do some magic to get some more points here. But we're actually, what we're going to do is we're going to go around and we're going to turn the generator on. Because normally that's what you would do. You would drop down and then you would go out the 750 door. And then you would come over here to the, to the generator. But because I don't have enough points to open that door and do everything else, I had to kind of work around that. So that kind of sucks here. But that's all good because we can just go ahead and come up here and kill this Templar. These Templars right here. Farm out a couple extra points here. And then get our points back for doing the generator. And then we have just enough to actually ride the tank a second time. So that is perfect right there. Normally these aren't the strats you would do. Like I said, if you want to see the full, like, perfect strats. I'm just kind of explaining the base strategies here. If you want to see the way you would do it in, a, in an actual run. Like I said, world record run is down in the description down below for you guys to go ahead and watch. 
So we're going to make sure, you want to also make sure that the zombie is over here in this area in Gen 2. So I usually like to wait like right here until he's here and then kind of run over here to the tank because you don't want the zombie to spawn in front of the tank or the tank will run the zombie over and kill it. And we want to stay on round, on this round as, as best as we can here. You can still do a run if you don't stay on this round and it's still definitely possible, but it is, does make things a little bit more difficult when you are not on. Round eight. Now we want to drop down once we get across that gap there. You don't want to drop down before it, just because you don't want to um, have to go all the way back up through, no man, through the bunker because you can't make it back on top of the tank. So we're going to run up here. We're going to get onto this part near the top of the tank because we need to be as close as we can um, to this one. And then as soon as we make this turn, you want to jump up here. I almost missed that actually. You grab this piece and this is where you, why you need stamina up in a run. You want to make a good angle jump to try to get towards these planks here and then jump and get back on the tank you cannot do that without stamina up. it's not possible to make that jump without stamina up you 100% need stamina up to make that jump so that's why we grab it earlier in the run and then we stand here at the back of the tank to make this jump here now this is the one you want to be very careful with because there is an invisible barrier like right here and you can clip that invisible barrier which really sucks in a run when that happens because if you miss that that staff if you miss any of the lightning staff pieces it's an automatic restart so you can jump up on top of the tank, you can go around the tank, it doesn't matter which way you want to do it. It's totally up to you guys. So what sucks about this run is I can't turn Gen 6 on right now because I don't have enough points. Like I said up here, if you haven't done any of this stuff, you would check for things like the dig spot or the stones, the placing the stone tablet down in the water, and then, um, you know, getting Gen 6 on. We would normally do that now, but I'm going to have to do that later in the run. So that kind of sucks. We're going to also come down here. We're going to place the gramophone. We're going to check right here for the other Maxis drone piece right there, but it's not there because we already got it on the other side of the tank. So then we're going to go through this portal and we're going to go ahead. When we come in the portal, you're going to activate, access the teleporter, and then you're going to come over here and you're going to grab the stone. You want to access the teleporter first so that way it is actually going. So I'm going to pause my game real quickly and bring up my staff guide. Now down in the description down below of this video, you guys are going to go ahead and see a a, a picture. I'm going to link it for you guys to go check it out. I'm going to post it on the or something. And it's going to be this photo for the staff guide here. And this is going to be your most important friendly thing. I recommend bringing this up when you do a run. I'm bringing it up now. Check what code this is right here it is the l and we're going to check where the code the l is there it's right there you want to memorize where that is so that way you can kind of move a little bit quicker so we go out the the ice tunnel we're going to go ahead and grab the ground of foam and then we will go ahead and come and run back up here now normally you would turn gen 6 on right now but we can't do that because we don't have enough points to do so so that kind of sucks um, now, if you don't, if you still don't have that first Maxis drone piece, you want to drop down here and you want to run out this way to grab the piece so that way you can build the Maxis drone at an ideal time. You don't want to be building the Maxis drone out of your way. It can spawn right there next to that sign. So if you don't get it in either two spots, this is where you want to run and go out this way. But if you do get it in the other two spots, you'll just run down the stairs and then quickly go up the excavation site on that side right there. Makes things a little bit easier to do. So now we're going to go ahead and come over here. We're going to go up top here. Normally we'd be going on the other side if you didn't get the if you already got the Maxis drone piece, uh, but I just wanted to show you guys how to do that. And we're gonna run it all the way down here and go ahead and place the gramophone down right now, and then we will stand next to this box. If you have zombies, you can kind of chill around here. We want to stand next to the box and then get down here as fast as possible. This is why we use we place the gramophone down there now because you can kind of clip through here like that before it's completely done. Now, what we wanna do is we wanted to be checking for those, the third Maxis drone piece. If you didn't find it all the way up top or in that middle section, then you wanna come down here and you wanna run over here and you wanna check for this bottom switch right here. If this is not on blue, you wanna turn it once, just once. That's all you wanna do as you're running. And then you wanna come down here and pick up the Maxis drone piece right there. Then we're gonna build the ice staff and we are gonna go ahead and swap this out for the uh, MP40 right there. And then we have our first staff and we can commence staff building. So. We're going to go ahead and turn that right there. We're going to turn whatever one we come up to first. The codes go from um, lightning, ice, wind, and fire in that specific order. We'll grab the gramophone. We will run up here. And then we are going to go ahead and come through here. And we're going to run. I'm not going to run this way. I'm going the wrong way. Sorry, guys. I messed up here. Okay, we'll, we'll go back up here and I'll show you guys the ideal route. So when you come out here from the pack punch, you're going to want to run this way. You're going to turn right and you're going to want to drop down here. Now, if you don't have that fire staff piece, you can go ahead and run through here and pick that up. 
Um, that's that's the ideal way to do that. And this is also another opportunity where you can turn that wind panel right there. But we're going to go down here into the wind tunnel. Now, this is going to require some precise movement here. I'm going to show you guys exactly what I do, and then I'm going to explain it afterwards. If you don't have the lightning disc yet, this is the third spot for it to spawn in. So you want to make sure you know that it's going to be here and grab it while you're waiting for the portal to build right here. All right, so once this is done, I'm going to show you guys. So what we're going to do, I'm going to explain this as fast as I possibly can. We're going to activate the portal, we're going to run over here, and we're going to do this code as fast as we can. So we remembered that it was the L, so we can go ahead and shoot that immediately. Check this. I usually like to pause, look at my guide. It's an LI for the next one, and then this one is going to be IL for this one. So we're going to shoot that, and then that one is going to be the single line. We're going to shoot that. And then this one is going to be LE. And then the last one is going to be L dot. So once you have all of those shot, you want to do it as fast as you possibly can so that you can get back to this teleporter and get out. If the teleporter crumbles, you're going to lose a lot of time there. And that's really going to suck. So we're going to go in here, grab the gramophone. And we have the first code for the ice piece done right there. Now, I should have done Gen 6 earlier, like I said, just because I'm not going to be able to get the fire staff. So that's going to mess me up. So like I said, another point right there. That's an ideal point to check for that. Make sure that that is turned up. Well, we've already done that. So you want to reload this before you come up here and shoot this and then shoot it with your Mauser just like that. Here's that other piece of the fire staff that I totally forgot from the Panzer right there. So make sure you get that. And then we shoot this one. We shoot it with the Mauser. And there we go. And now we are going to go ahead and run this way. You want to follow this exact path. You want to go this way. You'll, you'll see why I go this way. So what we're going to be doing here is a little bit interesting because it's a little bit different than what you would think you would do here. We're going to drop down this way. We're going to go this way. You're going to check for the Gen 3 shield piece if you don't have it already, if it wasn't over there by the generator. We check in this world barrel for it can be right there. And then we're going to go down into this tunnel right here. We're going to place the gramophone down for the fire tunnel. And then we're going to go ahead and grab the shield piece that's right there. So now we're going to just go ahead and wait here for the fire tunnel to build itself. Just gonna give it some time here. All right, good. It built. So for this one, you just kind of want to want to go back into the right. Most of them, it's usually back into the left. This is kind of back into the right, just a little bit. We run over here and we're gonna grab the wind um, crystal right there, so that way we can uh, have that. Now, doing this, the only reason why we go in here and we don't grab the fire crystal is because fire staff is the last staff that we build. And we're doing that just so we can activate the fire crystal so we can grab it in a different location later on in the run. So now we are going to go ahead and run this way because we have one more um, ice thing to go ahead and shoot. One more ice tomb. And that's going to be this way over here at the tank station. You can try, try to shoot this one as far back as you can. Sometimes it's not so easy to do. As you see, I kind of messed up. Just try to get that as best as you can. But there we go. We got all three of the ice tombs. You can see the blue light coming out of the portal right there, which is perfect. And we can go ahead and drop down. Now, I'm going to try to start digging up these spots so I can try to get some money here, maybe. Now, that you have all the Maxis drone pieces, this is the ideal time that you want to go ahead and build the Maxis drone right here. We go ahead and craft this. There you go. Pick up the Maxis drone. That way you can have that. Because um, this is like the last time that you're going to be in this area into Templars, and that's complete random luck on whether or not you're actually going to go ahead and uh, be able to build it there. So you want to build it at that point. And that's why I said you want to get all the pieces before you do the ice staff. So now we're going to go ahead and come back down here. We've got to go ahead and do the switches and then do the orb. So this is an interesting part of the run here. Um, you want to memorize where these switches are. This switch right here is going to turn that one right there, that panel. As you can see, it's already on blue. This switch is going to turn the top panel here. As we see, once we get the purple, then we know the next one's going to be blue, so we can just walk right past it. This switch is going to turn the bottom one right there. And then this switch, which you can actually hit from down here, you just jump and press the, uh, the action button, and then it, that will turn the third one. So you want to go ahead and shoot the orb right there. And like I said, you're going to want to be doing this as quickly as you possibly can. Um, and then we will go ahead and run on out of here. So now we're going to go out this way and we are going to go ahead and go towards the lightning tunnel because the lightning tunnel is going to be the last tunnel that we actually go out of. And um, this is going to be the last one we build. It's the last one we need and it's where we're going to keep the gramophone. So I'm just digging these things up. Normally you wouldn't dig these spots up, but I'm digging them up just because I'm trying to get enough money to be able to actually do the fire generator or the gen six to be able to get the fire staff piece. So I might not be able to do it. I might have to go into the next run round, which is kind of what I'm trying to avoid doing, but we'll see what happens. 
So we're going to go ahead and place the gramophone down right here in the lighting tunnel. And this is where we want to be. This is where you're going to keep the gramophone for the rest of the run. And now we go ahead and go in here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and access the teleporter right there. And you're kind of hoping for a good wall pattern here so that way you don't have to go all, like running all around the map or running all around the room here to get to the placement. But we got a pretty bad pattern right there, which kind of sucks, but it's whatever. I'm not going to grab any crystals since we already have the wind crystal and you can only hold one crystal at a time. We're going to go out the lightning tunnel here and we're going to leave the gramophone there because we need it to be there. So now we're going to run back over to the excavation site to go ahead and build the wind staff. Because that is the next staff that we have to do. All right, so going up here, back down to the excavation site to build the wind staff. And then once we get the wind staff built, we are going to start doing the code for the wind staff. And there's some cool tricks that we can do for the code for the wind staff to kind of save us a little time. So when you come down here, I usually like to go on this side. Um, as I see, I messed up. That one's already I messed up. That was already on wind. I was not supposed to turn that one, but that's just going to hinder us a little bit. So you just want to be careful there. Make sure you don't do that. So we grab the wind staff, and then if that one's on wind, I will come up here and do this one um, after that. Just to kind of pull those switches as you're running out. You don't want to you don't want to stand there and set them to the correct colors. You just want to kind of pull them as you're running in and out. It just kind of saves you a little bit of time later on in the run, and it's just something that you can do. That's you're running right past it. So now we're going to go to the uh, lightning tunnel. Actually, it's better to run with the Mauser out because you have faster movement speed with the Mauser than you do with the staffs. So that's why I highly recommend running with the Mauser. And you want to keep your Mauser for the entirety of this run because the Boom Hilda is in essential for this run. So this is the one time that we're not going to access the teleporter that we just came out of. We're going to come over here. We're going to grab the lightning crystal. We got good wall patterns right there. And now we need to go ahead and refer to our staff guide to actually go ahead and do this one. So you want to come over here and shoot this one here. You want to make that the E with the dot. And the second one, you want to make it the single dot. So there are good patterns that you can start with. Once you do the first reload right there, that's when you want to build the portal. And so we want to make that one the dot. And then we want to make that one the LL. And then the last one, we want to go ahead and make the double I right there. So there we go. That's the win code right there. We got good timing with the portal right there. Sometimes you can get a poor code, and sometimes you can get a good code. Uh, it just all depends on the game. So now we're going to come up here. Another time to turn the lighting panel right there. And we're going to go ahead and shoot that right there. There is a zombie spawn that can happen right here. The zombie can spawn out right here. And if the zombie spawns there, you want to watch and make sure that you don't kill the zombie with the wind staff because that is going to go ahead and screw you up and make you go on to the next round, which is something you don't want to do at all. It'll mess up your entire run if you go on to round nine uh, before you have all the staffs built. It's still manageable to come back from that, but it does make things a little bit difficult to do. So the next furnace that we're going to go ahead and do, and what you basically need to do is make sure that all these furnaces, you have to make the smokestacks face towards the uh, excavation site, which you're going to see me do. Um, so this one we want to run over here. This one you can kind of get pretty quickly if you're good enough. But I kind of missed it there, so that's that's all good. We had to do a second shot. So that, that sucks. Um, smokestack is going towards the activation site there for the second one. And then we come up here at Gen 5, and we can get this one right here. And there we go. You'll hear the noise. Once again, another spot to check that generator panel right there. And there we go. Wind staff is done. Now, like I said, you can do that a lot quicker than I just did that there. Just taking it kind of slow so you guys can actually see um, how it is, how it's done. So now we are going to go ahead and run all the way back down here. And go ahead and um, finish off this puzzle right here. Very simple to do. I always like to go to this, this uh, switch first just because the other switch has the way up onto the, uh, the top part up here. So it's a little bit faster to do that one first. So yellow comes after blue. Just remember that for a run. Um, so that way you can kind of get these things. Now we're going to actually go ahead and shoot this when you get to this switch right here. Those things stay lit up indefinitely. So you want to go ahead and shoot them as soon as you see them. And then once you have it set in the right pattern, the ball will start to go up into the thing there. So super easy to do. And once it's done, then we can go ahead and run back out here. And now we are going to go ahead and get the uh, lightning staff done next, which is the final staff that we need to do. Final staff that we need to build an upgrade right now. The fire staff is the last one, but we actually don't upgrade it until later in the run. So you'll see, you'll see exactly why why we do that. So we're going to go ahead and head on down to the portal, the lightning portal to be exact, and we are going to place our wind staff down into 
the, uh, the, the pedestal where it belongs. And this is another point we're going to go ahead and activate the teleporter. Make sure you keep that, you get in that repetitive motion. We got good wall patterns right there so we can just run right on up to the pedestal and place it down. And like I said, if you, if this is your last chance to grab the lightning crystal right there. You don't have to grab it earlier, but you want to make sure you have it at least now. So there's plenty of times where you can grab the crystals there. Um, just so many points where you can do that. So uh, just make sure that you have it when you're ready to build it. That's all you need to do. Um, if you miss it earlier in the run, that's fine. You have plenty of other chances to grab each of the crystals just so long as you have them before you actually build the staffs. Because, of course, you're going to need that. So now that we have the uh, two staffs done, we're going to go ahead and move on to the lightning staff now. And we're going to head on down here and start building the lightning staff. Now, the lightning staff is definitely the fastest staff of them all to build. We're going to check here. The second one is already on lightning, so we don't need to turn that panel. That's good. The lightning staff is definitely the, uh, the easiest staff to go ahead and upgrade because of those electric panels that we were turning. If you had turned all those electric panels in the right order and have them all in the correct settings, then you are good to go and you can actually do this lightning staff in the very, very quick amount of time here. So you'll see what I mean here because it's going to skip the entire step if you have them all in the correct order, which saves a ton of time for a run. So I should be running with my Mauser out right now instead of my uh, lightning staff. It's faster to go around here on the wooden planks than it is to jump through the mud just because the mud slows you down like hardcore. So definitely run on the planks there. Um, and now we are going to go ahead and head on down here to the tunnel. Switch to the lightning staff before you go through the tunnel so that way you don't have to switch when you're in there because you want to start this immediately. And then we have to start the piano. So the first sequence is going to be 1, 3, and 6. And you want to activate the portal as fast as you can, of course. A good zombie spawn is if it spawns over there. That is an ideal spawn right there. The next one is going to be, if I can hit it properly, 3, um, 3, 5, 7 is the next spawn. And the walls actually screwed him over. And the last spawn is going to be 2, 4, and six right there and then we can just go right out of the portal now the portals have a massive hitbox so make sure you don't get too close to the portal or you're actually going to end up going out of the portal and that can really suck for a run so as you can see this the step is entirely skipped the second step is entirely skipped because we actually got um, all the things turned earlier in the run which saves us a lot of time and that's awesome that's fantastic so that skips an entire step which makes this lightning staff super fast to build and really easy to do all you have to do is the piano step really simple so now we're going to go down here and we're going to go ahead and finish off the codes here um, so fire is uh, right before lightning so as soon as you see fire and you turn it in another one then you want to go ahead and uh, just move on to the next one so ideally you want to shoot it when you're up top at that one so that way it is uh, it's ready to go as soon as you're good so you don't have to shoot it from down below and there we go lightning staff is done so uh, next one is fire staff, which we actually can't get the fire staff until I get gen 6 on So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a quick cut once we put the lightning staff in place And I'm gonna try and get enough points to actually turn on gen 6 um, We'll see what I can do from the big spots. Hopefully I can pull some magic If not, I'm gonna have to go on to the next round, which is gonna suck So actually I'm gonna do this before I, I go to place the lightning staff. All right guys, so I can actually read some some more chat now, which is good. Okay, well, never mind. <laughs> we got enough points right there. So there we go. Pulled enough points right there. That's awesome. Um, now we can go ahead and place down the Staff of Lightning. Now, what I'm actually going to do here, because I have to turn Gen 6 on for this run, normally you would already have this done. We're going to place this down. We're going to grab the Fire Crystal. Normally, you would go back out the Lightning Tunnel, like normally. You'd access the Teleporter. But we are actually going to go out the Ice Tunnel because I have to go ahead and turn on Gen 6. Um, what? So we're going to come out of the portal right here, and then we're going to go up top. Um, we're going to actually make sure that we don't get stomped by the robot here, because that's the last thing that we want to have happen right there. And um, so once the robot is gone, normally, like I said, you would have this done already before earlier in the run. But uh, because I am slow and I suck, um, and I didn't have enough points, we have to do this now. So just kind of ignore this part of the run right here, because it's not uh, not 
shouldn't be in a normal run. You wouldn't do this here. But once this is done, then we can grab the fire staff right here from the box. And also you want to check here for the fire disc if it's not in any of the other locations. So that's good right there. We got uh, we got the fire staff going. Now we can actually go ahead and build this. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, take this over to be built. Normally, like I said, you would go out the lightning tunnel and come off the other side of the excavation site, and then you would go ahead and go down and build it. But since we had to go this way, we had to take that short detour. It's going to be a little bit different in this run. But like I said, just for the tutorial, just want to show you guys the strats so that way you guys know exactly what to do. And if you want to see an actual run, like I said, description below for the world record. So we're going to pull these, try to get these all onto uh, fire staff here. But we are on the last staff right here. We're going to grab that. All right, so now that we have the fire staff, what we actually have to do is we have to go ahead and start filling the rest of the soul boxes up. So you want to go and try to get these on fire if you can and kill the zombie right there. So we have the Freya box and then we have the Gen 5 box that we have to do. Odin is coming through right now, which uh, it's not too bad of a pattern right there. But we're going to come over here and we're going to start filling the Freya box. And if you didn't fill the if you filled the Freya box earlier, like I said, you could do that. Then you're going to fill the excavation box for the third one here. So we're going to start filling this box up. It's normally going to take us until around round 10. There's not enough zombies on round 9 to actually fill up an entire box, which kind of sucks. But that's how it is. Alright, so you don't really want to hoard up the zombies, you just kind of want to shoot them in here. Um, you can kind of group them up if you want, but it's just going to waste time. You want to just kind of waste your ammo and shoot zombies. Just kind of get the rounds moving as fast as you possibly can. And there we go. So now is going to come a bit of an RNG part of the run. And we have the Templars that are going to show up and attack a generator on round 10. Now what sucks about this is they can spawn at any one of the generators. And there are a couple places where there's ideal generators depending on where you're at. We got Gen 4 which is a pretty good spot for generators. I'm actually going to stay here and finish up this box right here since we have enough time. Since we got an ideal uh, generator location right there. As you can see we just needed a few more zombies for there. So you want to finish that box up and then go for the generators. Unless they're taking something like Gen 1. Um, if they're taking Gen 6 and you're at Freya that's the ideal location. Gen 4 is also another good location. As is Gen 5. Um, any of those generators for that location so you just want to stay there now once you go ahead and kill the templars actually then you don't have to stay on the generator pad as long as they didn't ta fully take the generator so you can just uh you can hop right off and it'll refill itself back all the way up so now there we go we got we got good templars for this run to be honest that was that was pretty good templars um so now we're going to go ahead and move on over here we got thor coming through which is good if you have odin coming through you want to wait here um, at this area and just kind of train the zombies up until he stomps down because you don't want him crushing your box so that way you don't uh you have to refill these souls up again which would really suck it would not be ideal to do but we got good we got good robot luck we got good templar luck so that's good you only have to deal with the templars twice in a run so there's only two sets of templars that you're gonna have to fight as long as you stay on a low enough round which i normally do in a run So I don't know if we're going to have enough to actually fill this up completely on this round. We might have to go into round 11. And it's looking like we might have to do that. But we'll see what happens. Nope, we had just enough to actually fill up that box, which is perfect right there. You have barely enough on round 10. So there we go. We got that done, which means we are going to go down here. Um, this is why you want to have this, this portal here at, at Lightning, just because you can come right down here immediately after doing the final box right there. And it's perfect. An ideal spot. So now we can begin the Fire Staff upgrade. So what we have to do is we have to get kills on zombies here with the fire staff. So that's what we're going to be doing here. I'd like to just kind of sit in this corner here and just kind of uh, shoot the zombies as they get onto the uh, the fire panels here. It's kind of that's kind of the ideal way to do this. Nukes. I don't like to grab nukes. Um, you want to avoid those as well as zombie blood. That's another thing you want to avoid. Those are just going to kind of slow you down in a run, um, make you have to do more stuff than you probably already should. Um, so when you have to reload, I kind of like to circle them around as best as I can. To try to uh, not die because you don't you don't want to get cornered when you're trying to reload. Normally, you will get the wind staff done at all times. That's normally always what happens. The wind staff is going to finish during this part of the run, which is perfect. That's exactly what you want. 
because you do are going to need a staff to actually go ahead and fill up the souls for the, all the staffs later on. Uh, so we're trying to get all four of these pots filled. I'm not sure the exact zombie amount here for all of these. But as soon as we have four pots, which we do, which actually happened at the end of a round basically, which is kind of ideal. Normally you want to try to get it at the very end of the round, uh, where you still have a zombie left. But we're going to go out the ice portal now, because we have to go ahead and um, do the last step of the fire code here. Alright, so now we are coming out of here, where you're probably going to have a panzer spawn now that it's round 12. So you're going to have to deal with that when you come up here. If you're at the end of the round, I like to grab the uh, fists now, but we'll do that later. So check this. It's 2, 4, 6 is the code right there, which is going to be 5, 7, uh, 3, blood. That's the, that's the perfect code for you to get. That one right there that I just got because they're all in a line right here. That is the ideal code, but it can be something completely different. So like I said, I will provide the staff... Uh, build guide in the description down below for you guys to check out in this video um, So that way you guys will know exactly how to do each staff and upgrade them all It's a super great guide and it will definitely help you out a lot with the codes. So That was an ideal uh, fire staff right there. We got perfect perfect pattern right there and now we are going to uh, come up here And go ahead and uh, put the fire staff or finish the fire staff So we're actually gonna upgrade our Mauser as well. That's the next thing that I need to do um so we already have that second one done, so we just need to do this one here. And fire or fire comes after wind. So there we go. Whoops. Let's not get killed by the zombies there. Yeah, let's not do that. Fire is already done there. And I believe it comes at yep, comes after uh, wind. This is the only one that's gonna be kind of tricky to get from above. You can do it from above, but it is very hard to hit the hit the orb from above. It's not easy to do. Just gonna kind of clear out these zombies as best as we can. That orb is done. Now, on sometimes you can get Templars to come in on round 13, and that can really mess up a run. So sometimes I like to wait around here um, until round 13. I'll actually do that in this in this run for you guys. I like to end off round 12, just so that I can check to see if I'm gonna get Templars on round 13. So we'll actually see if we do get the round 13 Templars. I like to kind of wait, um, usually kind of get like right here to check for it. If we don't get them, that's all right. And it doesn't look like we're going to be getting Templars this round. So they can spawn anywhere from rounds 13 to 16. Um, so if you do get round 13 Templars, that's the ideal time to, uh, to go for them. And hopefully you'll get a good one like Gens 5 or... Uh, even two is pretty good as well. Two is not too bad. Three is not too bad. Six and six and one are the two worst Templar locations. So we're going to place the Fire Staff in there. And the Wind Staff should already be upgraded. So we can go ahead and grab that. Now what you want to do is you want to stand by the Fire Staff. And you want to go ahead and put the Charge Portals of the Wind Staff. Now only put one Wind Staff uh, Tornado down. Because there's weird glitches that happen with the Wind Staff. Where if you have more than one Tornado down. The second ones don't really do any damage at all. For some reason, they do nothing. It's a glitch that happens every so often, um, and it really sucks. Like, as you can see right there, it's not even sucking the zombies in until a little bit later, which really sucks, and I hate that glitch so much. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The wind staff is just terrible. I don't recommend using it, ever. Uh, so we got fire staff filled up there. You want to make sure fire staff is the first one that you fill, solely because... It is going to make your life so much easier because you can just grab the fire staff right there, kill the zombies, and then we're supposed to go over to an ice ice tunnel is where you want to get to next. Um, so come over here, go ahead and turn. We we'll actually access the portal right now. Hopefully we can get ice done. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. So normally you want to wait on the portal because you don't have enough zombies to actually fill up all the staffs on thirteen. So. It's best to just kind of wait to build the portal because this is this portal is probably going to go away. And the other thing is that uh, we're probably going to get generator. So we got Gen One right there, which is a really crappy generator that they took. Really bad timing on that, but we can just go out the fire tunnel and deal with it there. So that really sucks that we got that one, but like I said, it's all RNG basically. This is how you would react to this if you got Gen One in here. Um, ideally, I'd like to finish this 
ice staff before we leave. Yeah, try to finish the ice staff before you leave to go save a generator because if you don't, then you're going to have to come back in here and that's going to that's going to cost you even more time, which is really going to suck. Now, the nice part about the staffs is that when you get a max ammo, it fully re re uh, fully refills everything, including your clip and your um your your reserve as well. So it refills everything, which is perfect. Now, we could have actually grabbed our punchy fists back there at Gen 1. I could have done that if I wanted to, but um, I don't like to stay around in Gen 1 because it's just a bad place to be. So some things you can do with the Mauser are actually some really cool tricks where you can actually propel yourself and get some extra momentum. As you can see, you're going to see me do this. Uh, it kind of doesn't work too well. As you can see, I'm kind of getting a little bit. It's, that's a bad spot to do it at just because there's a lot of walls there. Mostly the open spots like on the tank path is a really good spot to do it. I'll show you guys it right here actually a little bit more like you can kind of propel yourself here if you don't get caught on a lip like they're kind of moving a little bit quicker so it's not not too bad it's a good strategy to do uh, to kind of move quicker throughout the mud helps a lot um, and then we're going to go over here normally you would come out of the ice tunnel come up here I like to put um, fire rocks down just so that way if something like a panzer spawns in like that um, I can just deal with them while I'm while I'm picking up the G-strikes we we'll actually grab that nuke there. Nukes are also an ideal thing that you can get for um, the Templars because nukes will automatically kill the Templars, which is great. Now, I like to drop down here, place three rocks down, and build the zombie shield right here. Now, you place the fire rocks down there so that way the zombies will not be able to hit you while you're crafting the shield. And then we have the shield, which we need to do for a certain glitch right here, which is a really cool glitch that you can do. So now we need to go ahead and get the G strikes here. I shouldn't have killed as many zombies as I did there. Um, I usually like to punch them if there's like just a couple single zombies here or there, uh, which it looks like there is. But you'll see what I do for the mass group of zombies, which actually is going to save you a lot of time. It's a really cool glitch that is allowed for speedruns, and it's awesome to do, and I love it a lot. So I hope you guys will enjoy this glitch as well. It's pretty cool. It's a pretty nifty glitch, and that's why we grab that shield. And that's why I build the shield there at this time, because this is the only point in the run where you actually need the shield. You don't want to build it anywhere else, and you don't want to build it any earlier. So I just, like I said, I like to punch when there's only a few zombies here and there. That's why you want to be on a low round as possible here. We got a zombie blood, which kind of isn't ideal. Kind of sucks. But um, it's not really worth it to do the glitch right now because they're all going to die if I start it. So this is kind of slow pace right here. This is why you don't want to get zombie blood. This is why zombie blood is not ideal at all for a run. Uh, because it's just going to slow down zombie spawns. And uh, you're just going to be stuck here punching like this. Normally you wouldn't want to do this because they're all just running away from me. And they're, or piling up somewhere else. Or piling up somewhere where I can't even get at them. So we're going to place these fire stones down here, switch to our shield. And every zombie that runs into the shield is actually going to be turned into uh, souls for the this, this, this stone. But we're already done with the stone, so I didn't really get to show the glitch off too well there. But we will show it off at the other G-Strike spot. So we have to actually take this back. To the other G-Strike location without getting, without stepping in any mud. So you just want to follow this path as fast as you possibly can right here. Um, and just kind of go as quickly as you can. Avoid the mud. Make these jumps as possible. Don't go in that mud pile. I've gone in that mud pile before and it really sucks. Um, you're going to see, as you can see, this is this is the, what I'm talking about right there. You get some serious momentum there as long as you don't hit the door. That, that really sucks when you hit the door. But we're just going to keep going down this way. Over here to Gen 2. And then we are going to go ahead into the tank station and place this stone down here. Reload our right there. And now we are back here. And we need to go ahead and fill up souls. And place it back down where you picked it up. And we need to fill this up with more melee souls. I believe it's around 20 to 30 melee souls that you actually need to get. I want to say it's like 30 something. Um, like I said, when there's just kind of single zombies here and there, I like to punch. When it's a group, I like to use the fire staff glitch, which is putting down the rocks and then switching to your shield. And then any, any zombie that dies from the, uh, the fire explosion will actually go ahead and get fed to this right here. We're just kind of at the beginning of a round. I like to punch. As you can see, we're kind of... If things get a little too hectic, be sure to go ahead and actually shoot the zombies. So you're going to see... As you can see, zombie souls going towards it right there. Which is... It's a really ideal glitch. It helps out a lot. I like to kind of circle them around, put it in this corner, and then switch to it. You're going to miss a lot of them because they're going to die. 
it helps to kind of put the uh, the, the fire um, farther away from the zombies. Like that right there. That was that was perfect. And that's just enough to get us G-Strikes right there. And we got max ammo and zombie blood, which is perfect. If you don't get zombie blood, that's alright. But we did get zombie blood, which is actually going to save us a lot of time. So that's like the first 50 minutes of the run right there, is doing all of that stuff right there. And now the last half of the run, the last like 15 minutes, if you go on world record pace, is doing the rest of the Easter egg. So... Alright, so we are now going to go ahead and head on down here, and we're going to do another glitch, which is allowed in the run, which is a really cool glitch that we can actually do to actually save us a lot of time. Normally, you're supposed to put all the staffs inside of the robots, but we're actually not going to do that because this glitch exists right here. So, there's this fire staff pedestal. I like to put down some fire rocks. We're going to put the staff there, pick it back up, put it down a second time, pick it back up again, put it down a third time, pick it up again, and then put it down a fourth time, and pick it up again. Now, I like to press, I like the YY when I, when I re-pick the staff back up because if you don't then you're gonna have to sit through that animation of um you know this pulling the staff out and everything and that really does suck um so we're coming out of the tunnel now and this is where we get to the rain fire step which is the bane of every speedrunner's existence on this map so rain fire is basically a step where what we need to do is we need to get odin to come through we need to get inside of a robot there's a, going to be a button inside of the robot. You're going to press the button. It's going to cause a firing sequence. And then at the same time, you need to actually throw a G-Strike on this slab to get the robots to blast open the slab. And now what sucks about this part is that you can do it very easily on multiplayer because you can have people held up at any location and get any robots. But when you're doing solo, it has to be Odin. It has to be Odin. And hopefully it is going to be this one right here. This foot is the ideal one. You can get it at that foot but it really does suck if you get it at that foot um because that one's a lot harder to do um so hopefully you get this foot it's basically you have about a 15 percent chance of actually getting this step to go and this is where all runs come to die on origins so it really sucks if you'd like to get down to one zombie here each cycle of rain fire is about three minutes in between um So we're just going to be waiting here until we get the robot here, until it shows up, and we will see what happens. So usually I kind of like to check out these windows here. I don't believe it's that foot. It's not that foot either, so I kind of like to check just to make sure. So it's not either of these two feet, so it does suck. I am going to go ahead and cut this footage up so that um, you guys will be right there. As you can see, it's Freya right there when we get the foot. So. All right, there it is, guide is going to be continued. So we got the robot foot right here, guys. So it's actually gonna be in this one, as you can see. It's that location right there. That's the ideal foot that you wanna get. You can get the other foot and still do it, but it is a lot harder to do. So we're gonna go on up in here, get crushed by the robot. Actually, the zombie stayed alive, which is perfect. If the zombie dies, it's whatever. But, uh, this is good. So we're gonna stand next to this button right here. Stand as close as you can to it, look at the button, whatever you have to do. And it's going to cause a purge sequence, and it's going to count down from 10 to 1. And when, as, soon as, as soon as it says 1, that's when you're going to hold uh, your action button to go ahead and press the button. And then you're going to back up towards the uh, extraction. So he said fire controlling activating, and then you back up so you can get closer to the purge. And then you want to switch to your boom hilda when you come out of here. And then you want to run over here, charge up a G-Strike, and then go ahead and just toss that right there. And there it is. Perfect. That, that, as you can see, that shot is super easy to make. And now it's going to go ahead and destroy the seal right there, which is perfect. So, rain fire is done. That's the part of the run that can really just kill, kill your runs because we got, like, third try rain fire right there, uh, which really sucks. You want to you get a much earlier cycle on that. First try or second try is what you need to beat world record. So we send Maxus into there, right there, and now we are going to get a horde of Panzers. Now, if you have one zombie left, this is perfect. It's a perfect run if you have one zombie left. It can be a little bit trickier to do this if you don't have one zombie. Charge up, your staff right here is what I recommend doing, and then putting it down right there so you can snipe the Panzers as soon as they spawn in. Because the fire staff does wonders against the Panzer. And then you can just kind of circle the zombie around here, make sure that he stays alive. And you just keep sniping the panzers like that. And I think we actually might have gotten a zombie blood there. 
No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, so we didn't get a zombie blood, which sucks. You're hoping to get a zombie blood here, because if you do, then it's going to save you a lot of time and effort. Alright, so I'm actually going to wait here until all of that goes away. Let's see, did we get a zombie blood? Does not look like we got a zombie blood. So if you don't get a zombie blood, there's a couple things that you're going to have to do here. If you do get a zombie blood, what you're going to do is grab the zombie blood and you're going to run over to the MP40 and trade out your fire staff for the MP40. But if you don't get a zombie blood, you're going to come down here into the place here. You're going to go ahead and place down your fire staff in the pedestal. And then you can go over here and pick up the ice staff right there. And now that you have the ice staff, what we need to do is to get a free zombie blood here. So we're going to go out here and out of the portal. And then we are going to go ahead and come on up here again. Check for Odin, make sure he's not running through to kill our zombie, which is good. And now we need to go ahead and shoot some chariots here. So we're going to go ahead and shoot this first one right here. And then we're going to go ahead and run on over here and shoot this second chariot right there. There we go, two chariots are off now. And then we just need to run over and get to the final chariot, which is going to be all the way over here. And as soon as you hear that little like release of energy sound, that means that you got all three of them in the correct amount of time. Now they do come back online, so if you didn't get that sound after shooting all three of them, that means that you are just going to have to do it all over again because you missed one. Or you didn't do it fast enough. So now what we're going to do is we're going to trade out this for our AK-74U. We actually have clear skies, which is perfect right here. And we're going to look around and try to find the uh, orange plane that is going to be in the sky. There it is right there. Try to watch where the guy spawns. He runs this this way around the excavation site, and then just kind of snipe him with your Boom Hilda and pick up the Maxis drone right there. So he runs this way around the excavation site, so if you're facing this way, it's clockwise. If you're facing this way, it's counterclockwise. So usually you want to either know where he is or run the opposite direction of the way that he runs, so that way you can catch up to him if you don't know where he fell down, if you didn't catch it uh, in the sky. So that was a solid one right there. Now make sure that you are switched to your AK-74U right here, or whatever your other gun is, before you go ahead and switch out to the staff. Because sometimes if you don't fully switch to your other weapon, when you have the Broomhilda, the game will glitch out and take your Broomhilda instead of your um, your staff. Or instead of your, your other gun for the staff. Which really sucks. So now what we need to do is we need to do some punching down here. So ideally it helps if you have the fire staff, but because we have the ice staff, it's whatever we can deal with it. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and punch some Templars. We have two steps less left to do in this run, which is super, super good, super great. And we are about to finish up. So you're going to see they have this white glow on their arms. You want to go ahead and punch them to get that white glow off. You don't have to kill them. You just have to hit them with a punch, as you saw right there. I have no idea how that didn't kill the zombie right there, considering we have insta-kill too on top of that. So I don't know how that guy survived, but... Um, you just have to get the white glow off of them. If you get too backed up, um, definitely just go ahead and fire off a couple shots of your staff. Use the charge shot if you're doing the ice staff. If you're doing this idea with the fire, like I said, just because you're going to have things will be a lot easier with the fire staff. But uh, we, we, got, we got pretty pretty good, a pretty good sequence down here isn't too bad as you can see right there we have the thing let's try not to die let's grab the temple ta uh, the tablet you want to be very careful when you grab that tablet too just solely because when you grab it you have a little cutscene it goes white and you can still get hit by the zombies at that point which really sucks because you can still die. So make sure you put down like an ice tornado or you shoot some of the fire staff. Make sure there aren't any zombies around you while you're doing that. It'll save you a hassle because you don't want to die there. So now we need to go pick up the Maxis drone again. So we're going to propel ourselves down here. Normally I don't like to waste my boom held up, but it's whatever. We can we can deal with it. So pick up the Maxis drone. You cannot pick up the Maxis drone before this. You have to wait an entire round before you can actually pick the Maxis drone up. So... Just be aware of that, that you can't pick up the Maxis drone as soon as you, you pick him back up from the from the uh, Red Baron in the sky. So you have to wait. That's why you want to pick it up at that point. And now we can go ahead and go into the crazy place. And we are going to start the final step of the Easter egg here. Where we're going to go ahead and put the uh, ice staff back down. And we're going to uh, actually have to get a bunch of kills inside of the crazy place on the zombies. 
So we're going to go over here, place the uh, staff down. Now, you can buy a second weapon if you want to in here. Usually, I like to just run with the Boomhilda and the uh, Thunder Punch Fists. But uh, for the sake of the run, we will go ahead and buy... Uh, we'll buy an STG, just because why not? We just lost our shield, so that kind of sucks. As you can see, we have the Ice Elemental Punch because we, we picked up the Ice Staff. So you're either going to have the Ice Elemental Punch or the Fire Elemental Punch. So I'm just going to try to play this as safe as I possibly can, just because I really don't want to die here can be kind of easy to die here. Not really too easy, but like it happens every so often. You get screwed over here. Uh, but if you do need ammo, I recommend buying the STG or the AK-74U instead of punching. Punching can sometimes be a little bit better. Normally my strategy is to wait over by the uh, ice tunnel to actually chill over there. Because you can get it chill because it's an ice tunnel. I like to chill over here by the ice tunnel and just kind of uh, stay here. Now, generators, you don't have to worry about them. The only reason why you need all generators online in the game is for rain fire. You need generators for rain fire and for the ascend from darkness step where you place the fire staff down in the, uh, the pedestal down below in the excavation site. You just need all generators on for those steps of the Easter egg, not for the rest of it. Um, so after that, after you do rain fire, then you can let the Templars take the generators if they want to. You don't have to go save them. It's the only reason why you need them online is for those two steps. So we're just trying to kill as many zombies as we can. Just don't forget that you have G-Strikes, and you have you have a one-hit melee punch, and you have Boomhilda, of course, you're going to have that in a run. Um, zombie Blood's kind of ideal. It's not the most ideal here, just because it kind of slows things down a little bit. Those zombies kind of stay away from you like that, and then they pile up in certain areas and can really screw you over where they pile up. So we're probably going to have about around 19 completion. If you get lucky enough to get a max ammo, that's ideal here. That way you can kind of get your Broomhilda ammo back up and running. But uh, as you can see, yep, we're probably looking at around 19 um, Easter egg completion right here. So that's not bad at all. It's not bad at all for this guide. This is an ideal ideal time to finish it. But uh, really, that's that's pretty much the entirety of the Easter egg. Um, I'm just going to do these finishing parts here while we wait for the uh, the souls to be completed here. So, thank you guys so very much for watching this. I'm going to give more closing thanks at the end. Like I said, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about this Easter egg, leave them down in the comments down below. I would be glad to, uh, to answer them for you guys in this video. Um... And we're just going to get the rest of these souls here. We're actually going to throw a G-Strike now just to kind of speed things up. We'll throw the second G-Strike down. Just a second as soon as they come around here. I didn't want to grab that nuke, that kind of sucks. So that nuke's going to waste a couple uh, couple rounds here. Yeah, so we should have been able to complete that on 19, but because I got the nuke, we're not completing it on 19, which kind of sucks. But it's whatever. We'll have to, we'll have to pull another round here. So yeah, these walls. There we go literally just needed one more zombie so once you're done that just go ahead and place the maxis drone right in the middle i usually like to grab the fire staff i tried it out for my boom hilda but i usually like to grab fire staff or wind staff so that way i just kind of can get the zombies out of my way when you need to and as soon as you enter the portal which you need to stand at the portal and you need to kind of look up hold x to access teleporter that's where you stop the timer right there and that's the end of the run so that's the end of an easter egg run right there that is the entirety of the origins easter egg speed run tutorial guide that should explain everything that you need to do all those strats that you need to do that i do for world record that i did to get world record that world record run will be down in the description down below for you guys to go ahead and check that out so you guys can go ahead and watch that and uh just see what i do how i do things in a certain run because a lot of these strats were kind of just like me going at the slowest pace that i possibly could so that way i could show off a good run for you guys and just kind of explain the strats on my way 
and if you want to see how you would do them in a real time run you can check the description down below to kind of learn things hopefully this will pull more people to wanting to speed run this easter egg i really want to do that since there's not really a guide for this and it's a very fun easter egg to speed run there's a lot of rng involved in this easter egg but it is definitely a lot of fun it's a great map zombies is a great game mode and it's really fun to uh speed run here so that's it for this guide. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe for more uh, speedruns, streams, just all kinds of things. I do all kinds of stuff on my channel, zombies related. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Like I said, any comments, questions, or concerns about this, uh, anything you guys want to know, leave it in the comments down below and I will be sure to answer them for you. So thank you for watching this speedrun guide and I hope to see you guys in the next one.